Hey guys, I think I might have an interesting one today. Uh, I guess it was a couple weeks ago I went and put my Honda Accord in reverse and I get this funky image on the screen instead of a normal backup camera view. I get these psychedelic colors and all. And the image is kind of there. You can see that's like some the edge of my driveway over there and that's some uh, you know crack sealer in the pavement. So the image is kind of there. It's just really funky colors that makes it hard to see anything. And it looks like the camera is communicating with the console here because I can change the angle. And the image is, you know, there, but it's just really messed up with the colors. So I'll be looking into that today. So looking at the wiring diagram, we have the rear view camera unit here. And then um, that connects directly up to the audio unit up in the, uh, the you know, the console, the screen in the um, front. And it does go through two connectors uh, to get up there. So I think that there's only three places we could have a problem. The one is that the camera itself is bad. The other um, is that there's a problem in the audio unit up front receiving the signal. Hopefully not because that sounds expensive. Or there's some kind of problem in the connection between the two. A loose connector or a broken wire or loose wire or something. I almost think that's the most likely possibility because it kind of looks like when you get like your connector and your TV loosely plugged in and the colors are all funky and then you seat the connector all the way in and it clears up. Uh, so it almost looks like that kind of thing to me, but I guess we'll see where the investigation leads. So we'll need to remove this inner liner and it just has a bunch of little push pins to pop out. And then up underneath there's four um, little 8 millimeter bolts that have to come out. And now this whole piece of trim uh, should be able to come right off. Uh, it's just got some clips in it. So here we have the wire harness and then the uh, license plate light in the backup camera. I'm just going to uh, try to free this up a little bit to give a little bit more room. Then we'll disconnect the um, camera for now. It'll just pop out the uh, License plate light too, just to make it easier to work on here. I wanted to start just by looking at how this uh, connector looks. It is in a spot where it does seem like it would get a lot of moisture. And so I just want to make sure it looks like the contacts are in good shape. Um, yeah, and to me they look like they're in really good shape. And then the pins in here, same thing. To me they look like they're in really, you know, clean. I don't see any sign of corrosion or anything. Okay, so these are the, this is the pin out for the camera. Um, there's the camera video output, which is an NTSC video signal. And then there's an um, camera adapter maybe, and that detects the connection. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but it looks like it's to signal whether the camera is attached or not. And then there's um, there are two bit commands, and those control the um, what mode the camera's in, which view. And then there's a ground and power. And from what I understand, that VCC rail that comes from the console, um, I think it should be the 7.1 volts, not the battery voltage from looking online, but I don't know that for a fact. So first I just want to check that the 
um, voltage and the uh, supply voltage and ground are good. So I'm just going to measure VCC to ground and confirm that's the um, 7.1 volts that I believe it should be. Um, so let's see, the VCC is 5, which is the red wire. So I'm just going to gingerly try to get in alongside of it and probe in there. And then the ground is pin 4, which is the white wire. So it's over right next to it. Okay, and then I need to go start up the vehicle and then we'll um, check um, that that voltage is correct. Okay, I just started it up and put it in reverse and you can see it does have the 7.1 volts back there. Um, you know, probably wouldn't hurt to put a load on it and just make sure that stayed stable, but I don't think the camera really takes a lot of current anyway, so I'm pretty comfortable that the ground and power are uh, correct back here, so that's probably not the problem. Now, um, normally NTSC signals are terminated um, with a 75 ohm resistor uh, to match impedance and prevent reflections. Uh, so assuming that's the case, we should be able to measure the resistance between the camera um, video output and the ground without the camera attached here. And that should uh, measure 75 ohms, which is the terminating resistor up in the um, display unit. Um, and if that's if that does measure about 75 ohms, then it kind of confirms the wire integrity all the way back. Um, so the camera video is the one again, that's the black. And then we've got the um, ground is the four and that's the white. Okay, and you can see that it measures 76 ohms. Uh, so very close to 75 ohms. Uh, so I think that's a really good check that the integrity of the connection on the video output is good all the way up to the head unit. So I think if you do that check, and check the um, the supply voltage at the camera, and that looks good, the 7.1 volts, you can be pretty sure it's the uh, camera module itself and just replace that. So just out of curiosity, I did hook up my oscilloscope to the uh, that video output, and you can see the NTSC um, output on the screen. Let me just stop it here and go turn off the vehicle. So I'm not a real expert on the NTSC signal, but um, I do know the basics of it. Um, this is the horizontal sync pulse, um, and this is what they call the front porch and the back porch, I believe. Um, but essentially, um, this is an old analog video format, and it was designed for the old cathode ray tube uh, television sets. And so like this time here is actually the time that the electron beam would actually be returning back to the other side of the TV after it completed a row. And then this is all the pixel information um, to, you know, the color and intensity for all the pixels in a row. And then once it gets done drawing all of those across that um, row of pixels, the electron beam would then like travel back to the other side of the screen here. Um, so it does have the basic same, the correct basic shape of an NTSC signal. But of course, you know, we knew that the video signal was coming through. It's just that the colors are messed up. And I don't know the details of that. I think the color is partly done by the phase of the sinusoids in here relative to the color burst there. Um, so if something was wrong with the color burst, like that could cause the uh, weird colors. Or if the phase encoding was, um, you know, incorrect. Uh, in the main waveform. I did want to just zoom in on that color burst um, for a second and just see if that looks correct roughly um, because it does seem like that um, you know would be a key culprit if there was a problem with that then it could affect the color. So from reading online it looks like that should be 286 millivolts. So I think that um, the gist of it is like this uh, color burst um, you know, sets a phase lock loop in the receiver and then it compares the difference in phase between the pixel data and this waveform, I think, um, to understand the color encoding. So if there was a problem and it wasn't able to sync to this waveform, then it could produce color problems. So I think the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of that is supposed to be um, 
286 millivolts from what I looked up. Um, so let's see what it measures as. Um, so it looks like it's measuring like 216 millivolts. So that does seem somewhat low. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if that's um, different if, you know, after I replace the camera, if that uh, might be the culprit. Um, and then the frequency of that, I think, is supposed to be 3.58 megahertz. Um, so let's take a look at that. So like from that trough. To that one. Yeah, so I'm measuring like 3.57. So it looks like the frequency is, you know, roughly correct. Um, but it does look like the amplitude's uh, somewhat lower than I expected. Um, so uh, perhaps that's related. But, you know, actually figuring out, like, what is wrong in this signal by looking at it on a scope is um, probably pretty difficult. So seeing that NTSC signal up on the screen got me thinking it would be pretty cool if I could inject a known good NTSC signal into the connector in the back with the camera unplugged. And then if I get an image up on the screen, it proves that the problem is the camera and not in the connection through the harness or in the uh, console inside. So I dug up my old um, DVD player that I haven't used in a long, long time and because it has a composite video output and composite video is just NTSC. So I've hooked that up just through an RCA um, type video cable into the back probe on the connector here. And then um, I'm just going to load it up with a, a DVD and assuming it um, still works, um, we should be able to see Thomas the Train up on the dash in the front. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. In order for the, um, with the camera unplugged, in order for the console to recognize the camera, um, we have to drive this uh, camera adapt. And I actually looked at it, and when I plug the camera in, um, that gets driven to zero. So I think it's just got like a, you know, short in it um, to ground. So when it pull, when the camera pulls that line low, then it alerts the console that a camera is connected. Uh, so I'm just going to back probe um, that camera adapt, which is pin 2, which is the brown, and then um, ground that to fool the console into thinking that there's a um, camera attached. And then that just gets um, forced to ground here. So now um, it should think there's a camera there and use the NTSC signal from the uh, DVD player. Okay, we're uh, back up front and I've still got my DVD player plugged into the connector in the back to emulate the um, backup camera and I'll just put it in reverse. And there we go, Thomas and friends and the image looks like all the colors are perfect. Um, so I think that proves out that um, the connection going all the way to the front is good and obviously the display here is good and the receiver in it uh, So it definitely is the uh, rear view camera module Okay, I did get a new um, Honda uh, camera module in and it looks identical um, To the old one and that's the uh, part number for the 28 uh, 2018 Honda Accord um, 1.5 liter anyway uh, So I'll pop that in and uh, see if that fixes the problem Okay, so here we are with the new camera module installed and we put in reverse and you can see that the image is back to normal here. Um, and you can see that this is the same image I tested with uh, to begin with. So you can see the, the driveway there. Um, you might want to check and make sure there is no recall. I did check there is no recall for this vehicle, a 2018 Honda Accord 1.5 liter, but um, there are a lot of recalls on different Hondas for backup cameras. It seems like most of those are for the camera just being completely non-functional, um, but maybe that'll expand to include these in the future. Um, so check that beforehand. Anyway, hope this was useful if you have psychedelic colors on your backup camera too. Um, if it was me, I'd probably just um, 
you know, no need to insert the other signal unless you just want to do it for fun. But as long as you measure and you get 75 ohms uh, impedance back and the supply looks good there, uh, I think you can call the everything else good and just throw a new camera module in. Anyway, that, that would be my advice. Um, if you are curious what's inside of one of these, um, I kind of tore it apart. Um, this is where the connector comes through. And then it goes to a flex connector there. And then there's a tiny little connector here that then plugs into the back of this stacked board assembly. So that plugs in over here. And you can see a variety of ICs on here. I don't know, this looks like e EGO or something. I'm not familiar with that manufacturer. But these are stacked up. And so if you take these two apart, there's little connectors on it. There's some more ICs there. A bunch of ceramic caps and discretes. And then on here, there's another chip. This one says Windbond. And I looked them up, and it um, it looks like it's a Taiwanese company that makes uh, memory uh, chips. So I assume maybe that's a flash uh, chip or something for the uh, the code for a microprocessor or something. But who knows? And then um, if you take this off, then we have the lens. And I was kind of curious because uh, you know it's got the three different views, and one that looks almost vertically down. Um, and I was curious how they do that. Uh, I thought maybe there'd be something mechanical in here, but it looks like this is just, you know, a fixed uh, lens. I'm kind of curious how they actually get the image to, you know, look downward when I don't see anything mechanical um, in this whole lens. So that would be interesting to understand. And then on the back of this, you can see the uh, image sensor um, chip. And again, that just meets right... Um, onto the back of the lens like that. So, kind of neat.